fully safeguarding and fully caretaking of everything, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also Allah Azza wa says, وَرَبُّكَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْنَ حَفِيظٍ Definitely your master is hafiyyah over everything, so very similar meaning. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَاللَّهُ خَيْرٌ حَفِظًا Allah is the best of anybody who takes care of or anybody who guards anything, subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَهُوَ أَرْحَمُ الرَّحِمِينَ And not only does he safeguard, but he's also the most merciful of anybody who has any mercy as well, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also Allah Azza wa says, um, he says, uh, Definitely we have sent down the revelation and we are also safeguarding it. We are also taking care of it. We are also guarding it from anything that comes from any side. Uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what does it mean that Allah has these names? Al-Hafiz and Al-Hafiz subhanahu wa ta'ala. Among the meanings of these names is that Allah himself guards the heavens and the earth and he guards everything and he guards everything without ever being tired. That fact that he is guarding and taking care of and he is safeguarding and he is stopping the harm from coming upon any of his creation as he will subhanahu wa ta'ala and, it, and he does that all the time and he does it perfectly as he wills it subhanahu wa ta'ala and it doesn't tire him at, in any way, shape or form. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, وَلَا يَؤُوذُهُ حَفْظُهُمَا In the end of Ayatul Kursi he says that mm -hmm. taking care of them it doesn't tire him in any way subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also Allah Azza wa Jalla says, وَحِفْظًا مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْطَانٍ مَرِدْ Allah is guarding them from every shaitan who's attacking or trying to harm anybody or anything in any way. Also, Allah Azza wa Jal uh, says, لَهُ مُعَقِّبَاتٌ مِنْ بَيْنِ يَدَيْهِ وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِ يَحْفَظُونَهُ مِنْ أَمْرِ اللَّهِ That Allah Azza wa Jal has, uh, there are pursuers who come upon that person from in front of them and behind them, and Allah Azza wa Jal guards, يَحْفَظُونَهُ He guards all of his slaves, by the will of Allah Azza wa Jal, يَحْفَظُونَهُ مِنْ أَمْرِ اللَّهِ Also, Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala not only guards, but part of guarding and safeguarding and taking care of is also recording. So just like when a person memorizes the Qur'an, we call them a hafid of the Qur'an, because that person has now made a mental recording of the Qur'an. <coughs> so in the same way, Allah Azza wa Jal is making a record, and His angels are making records of everything that we do, everything that we say as well. So that's also a part of Him being al hafid and al hafid subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also the fact that Allah Azza wa Jal guards His allies from sins, he guards the allies from the attacks of the shaitan. Also, he preserves the slaves from different types of destruction and so on. And so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is all part of how he is, subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's part of his attribute of himself. And so, let's look at some more ayat and let's look at how this relates to, especially how it indicates the magnificence and the power of Allah azza wa jal, and really what amazing favors that he's doing for us, even though most of the time we don't really think about this. So, Allah azza wa jal, um, uh, Abdur, uh, one of the scholars, uh, Shah Abdul Rahman Saadi, he says, Al-Hafiyyah, Al-Ladhi Hafadha Ma Khalaqahu, Wa Haatha Ilmahu Ma Ajad Ma Ajadahu, Wa Haafadha Awliyahu Min Wukurahim Fi Dhnubi Wal Halakat. So he says, he is the one who safeguards everything that he created, and everything that he created, his knowledge surrounds it, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also he safeguards all of his allies from the sins. Not only that he stops sins from coming to us, because there are so many sins that we could fall into, and most of those sins Allah really even stops from getting to us. And then those sins that even do come close to us, then we have so many ways to get rid of those sins as well, as we will see inshallah towards the end of the chapter. Um, but also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is safeguarding us, guarding us from the sins, he's also guarding us from the effects of the sins. So one of the names of Allah, the most one of the most famous names that we all know is the name Al-Ghafir or Al-Ghafur subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? The name Al-Ghafur is to guard because in Arabic the Mughfar is the helmet. When you wear the helmet, it guards you from the attacks of the enemy. And so why is Allah Azza using this name Al-Ghafur, which is so related to the, to the word for the helmet? Because we commit sins and those sins do have effects. They have effects on our Iman, they have effects on the rest of our life. They have effects on our family, they have effects on how we behave with everybody as well. And so Allah Azza wa Jal not only guards us from the sin if He accepts us and if He forgives us, we usually use the word forgive, but it means much more than that. That Allah Azza wa Jal is taking care of us and safeguarding us from the sin, from the effect of the sin, from the effect that the way that the sin could affect everybody else around us as well. So Allah Azza wa Jal, because of Him being Al Hafid and Al Hafid subhanahu wa ta'ala, is taking care of us even when we do commit a sin. Even when we commit a sin, if we seek His forgiveness, if we seek His maghfirah, Allah Azza wa Jalla is taking care of us and guarding us even in those times as well. So, <clears throat> among the effects of uh, the fact that we know that Allah Azza wa Jalla has these names, Al-Hafid and Al-Hafid subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that uh, uh, He says, وَيُمْسِكُ السَّمَاءَ أَنْ تَقَعَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ Allah is real safeguards the earth, He safeguards so that the sky doesn't fall on the earth. So not only is He safeguarding us, the human beings and the animals and so on, He's also taking care of the creation as well. So He keeps the sky where it is and He keeps it from, I mean, if you think about it, there are millions of tons of atmosphere all around us. What is it that keeps it where it's supposed to be? And what is it that stops it from being compressed down to where we are now? Uh, people talk about gravitational force, and they talk about rotational force, and they talk about the magnetosphere and all of this. This is all part of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the way that He created all of this. So just because we know how it works doesn't decrease from its majesty. And that definitely doesn't decrease from the majesty of the one who made it. And the one who made it work and is constantly working and doesn't require any support or any investment from us in any way at all. Allah still takes care of us and He takes care of the sky above us and the ground underneath of us, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we take the air and the water and the rain and everything comes to us. So He's taking care of our needs, He's taking care of our investments, He's looking out for our interests, subhanahu wa ta'ala, without us making any, uh, doing any work or making any effort for all of these things. So <clears throat> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, uh, as we saw earlier, وَسِعَ كُرْسِيُّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَلَا يَقُودُ وَحِفْظُهُمَا وَهُوَ الْعَلِيُّ الْعَظِيمُ His kursi encompasses the heavens and the earth, and taking care of the heavens and the earth and everything between them doesn't tire him at all. وَهُوَ الْعَلِيُّ الْعَظِيمُ He is the highest above, and He is the greatest subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, Allah says uh, that He is, uh, uh, إِنَّا رَحْنُ نَزِّلْنَا الذِّكْرَ وَإِنَّا لَهُ الْحَافِظُونَ We definitely send down the Qur'an, the remembrance, and we are guarding it also. So He's safeguarding the Qur'an. And also, the scholar said that anybody whom Allah guards is guarded. And anybody who He doesn't guard, that person becomes weakened and eventually that person becomes destroyed. Why? Because if the person has decided to abandon any connection with Allah's will, then Allah's will most of the time still takes care of that person. Up until a point where He decides not necessarily to punish them, but simply to remove one of His blessings from them. Just to remove one of His blessings from them, which is Him guarding them, subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he simply removes just that one benefit, then all the diseases and the attacks and the shaitan and everything from above and below and on the right and the left, all of these things will affect this person and very, very quickly he'll become weak and he'll become destroyed. <clears throat> and among the benefits uh, or among the greatest blessings that we have by virtue of the fact that Allah is al is al-Hafid and al-Hafid subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the scholar said that there have been so many attacks on the Muslims, so many attacks from outside as well as so many attacks on the inside of the Muslims as well and so many things happen all throughout Islamic history yet the Quran itself has never been changed by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So among the greatest benefits, among the greatest blessings that we have is that every Muslim no matter what background and no matter what theology and no matter what language or anything we all read the same mushaf, we all turn towards the same qibla, we all pray the same type of prayer and this is that Allah Azzawajal has safeguarded the basic foundational, essential elements of the religion. And that really is one of the biggest blessings that Allah Israel has given to the Muslims that He did not give to the previous nations. It's, I mean, we take it for granted, but look at the gigantic confusion that previous uh, other religions find themselves in. Because they lack the, uh, the source book, because they lack the scripture, or they have different versions of the scripture, or they don't know even the basic foundational elements of their theology, and yet the Muslims, at the basic foundational issue, we, this is not a problem that we have. I mean, the average Muslim will agree with any other average Muslim about what the basics of Islam are about. We, there is no confusion about these issues. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has safeguarded the Kaaba, and even though the Kaaba has no natural defenses around it whatsoever, in fact, the Kaaba is in a valley, and it's the easiest thing in the world for an army to attack what's in the valley, all you have to do is surround the mountains, or control the mountain in the area, you can attack down into the valley. How come Allah has safeguarded the Kaaba and safeguarded the, everything around it as well? It has no natural defenses and there's nothing valuable inside as well. So why did Allah Azzawajal and how did Allah Azzawajal guard this? But the amazing thing is that it's guarded anyway because of the love that Allah Azzawajal has for the Kaaba. So therefore, everybody wants to come, everybody wants to come visit the Kaaba. And everybody wants to be humble and wants to spend their own money and their own time and their own uh, uh, expense and everything on their, own, on their own dime. They want to go and visit the Kaaba and once they go and visit, they want to come again and again. Why? Because Allah Israel guarded the Kaaba not only from physical attack, He guarded it even from emotional attack. I mean, when the, the pictorial went out in Ramadan a few weeks back, a, few, a couple of months back, uh, and people were saying, look at, look at this 
uh, this is what goes on in the Kaaba, this is what goes on in the 27th night of Ramadan. And everybody was saying, this is so amazing, I wish I could be there, I wish I could be there. The last time I went was 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago. Non-Muslims were writing up and saying, I wish I could go as well. This looks so awesome, why can't I come and visit? I would love to visit. It's love that Allah has placed in the heart of everybody. It's, I mean, when Ibrahim made the invitation, the call for people to come to visit the Kaaba, and he made it thousands of years ago. And as the Prophet ﷺ indicates to us that Ibrahim ﷺ, or perhaps in the Israeliya, that Ibrahim ﷺ says that, Oh Allah, you're ordering me to make the call, but how will my message, how will my voice reach to the people? Allah ﷺ told him, you make the call and I will ensure that his voice reaches to the people. So thousands of years later, here we are, and we're all wishing we could go to the Kaaba right now. How many of us right now wouldn't be ecstatic if we received a ticket, or I got the chance to pay $2,000 and go visit the Kaaba tonight? That would be amazing. We would all love to do that. And so Allah has safeguarded the Kaaba from physical attack, from military attack, from economic attack, and He has safeguarded the Kaaba from emotional attack as well, because of the gifts of uh, by virtue of Him being Al Hafiz and Al Hafiz Subhanahu Wa Taala. And of course, we all know the story of the elephant that Allah has guarded the Kaaba when it was even under military attack. Even at that time, the weapons themselves turned around and refused to participate in the battle. Also, Allah saves people from evil as well. So Allah says, فَالصَّالِحَاتُ قَانِتَاتٌ حَافِظَاتٌ لِلْغَيْبِ بِمَا حَفِظَ اللَّهِ So he speaks about the believing women that because they are righteous, because they are pure, because they take care of themselves, so therefore Allah takes care of them also. حَافِظَاتٌ لِلْغَيْبِ بِمَا حَفِظَ اللَّهِ So Allah takes care of them because of the fact that they take care of their duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, when uh, the Prophet ﷺ told Abdullah ibn Abbas he said, Ya Ghulam, inni mu'allimuka inni mu'allimuka kalimatin ihfadhi Allah yahfadh. He says, keep up your duty to Allah or safeguard what you have to do for the sake of Allah, Allah will take care of you. Guard for the sake of Allah what He likes, Allah will guard you. Ihfadhi Allah yahfadh. So because Allah Azzawajal is al hafiz and al hafiz if we are doing something, anything for the sake of Allah, we are taking care of anything that Allah likes, Inshallah, bi idhnillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah Azzawajal will be taking care of and will be guarding us as well. And so therefore, Allah Azzawajal praises the, those people who guard his rights, those people who guard the, the limits. And so he says, وَالْحَافِظُونَ لِحُدُودِ اللَّهِ وَبَشِّرِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Those people who are guarding the limits of Allah and give good news to the believers. Because it's only the believers who are constantly acting in this manner. And Allah Azzawajal says, هَذَا مَا تُوَعَدُونَ لِكُلِّ أَوَّابٍ حَفِيظٍ مَنْ خَشِيَ الرَّحْمَانَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَجَاءَ بِقَلْبٍ مُنِيبٍ He says, this is what's been promised to every heart that keeps constantly returning back and keeps constantly safeguarding everything they're supposed to for the sake of Allah. Whoever is fearing the most Al-Rahman, who is ever fearing the most merciful, even when they're alone, وَجَاءَ بِقَلْبٍ مُنِيبٍ And they come with a pure and they come with that clean, that clean heart. And um, among the greatest things that helps us guard, or that we should be guarding, as well as once we guard it, then Allah Azzawajal safeguards us as well, is to safeguard the Salah. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ I'm, I'm sorry, He says, حَافِظُوا عَلَى الصَّلَوَاتِ وَالصَّلَاتِ الْوُسْطَى He says, take care of the Salawat, and especially the middle Salah. Especially the middle Salah, and Aisha رضي الله عنها, she used to say that, Salat al-Wusta is Salat al-Asr. Why Salat al-Asr specifically? Allah Azza says, take care of all of the Salahs and the middle Salah. That means that that middle Salah is the more risky one because typically that's the time when people get really busy. They have to finish up their work, they have to catch the train, they have to get back and make sure they can commute, make sure that they have time to get back home in time and whatever afternoon, evening appointment that they have to. So it's very, very easy to keep delaying, keep delaying, keep delaying and very easy to miss that Asr Salah. And so perhaps that's why Aisha radiallahu anha, she always used to say that Salat al-Wusla is Salat al-Asr. But anyway, there are other opinions, and it could be that for one person, this is one is more difficult, and for another person, that one's more difficult. Also, Allah Azzawajal says, وَالَّذِينَهُمْ عَلَىٰ صَلَوَاتِهِمْ يُحَافِظُونَ He's praising the believers because they are safeguarding the Salah. So what's so great about guarding the Salah? Because the scholar said that Salah is a sila. Salah is the connection between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you safeguard that connection between yourself and Allah, then Allah Azzawajal is going to safeguard you as well. Because just like when anybody is safeguarded, whatever that we hold important, whatever we value in our life, if we take care of that thing, then Allah, then whatever that, that service that that object provides for us, that's more likely that we'll be receiving that benefit from that. But just for us to understand what it means, if we are guarding the things that Allah likes, and Allah definitely likes and loves the Salah, and the Salah is after all the direct 
one-way communicate or direct um, uh, emergency phone call that we can have between us and Allah Azza wa Jalla. So if we take care of that, then Allah Azza wa Jalla will take care of us at that time as well. <coughs> and um, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Inna salat tanha al fahshai wal munka." So if we are taking care of the salah, among the benefits we get from that is that the salah stops us from making the evil and dirty and disgusting types of sins. And so, uh, and among the benefits of the salah or what happens if we don't take care of the salah is Allah Azza wa Jalla says. فَخَلَفَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ خَلْفٌ أَضَاءُ الصَّلَاةَ وَاتَّبَعُ الشَّهَوَاتِ فَسَوْ فَيَلْقَوْ نَغَيَّةً He says that after that generation came another generation who abandoned the salah, أَضَاءُ الصَّلَاةَ وَاتَّبَعُ الشَّهَوَاتِ So they abandon the salah, what comes next? They start to follow their desires. And then what happens next is, then after that they are going to go and they're going to meet evil very, very soon. Because it started with abandoning the salah, then that led to all kinds of evils, and then after that, that led to them meeting evil and destruction directly. Right? So it's a very quick process. Abandon the Salah, then this, then this. Very fast. Which is one of the f uh, saddest and most common things that you will find. That people get doubts in their mind about whatever, uh, about some theological issue or something that happened in the seat of the Prophet or something like that. They don't bring it up to people. But it, it comes in their mind and it sits in their mind and he allows it to infect himself and that affects his Salah and as soon as he stops praying the Salah, that's it. Now all the doubts and all the sins come from every direction because he stopped the Salah. So then he gets into all kinds of sins, he gets into all kinds of doubts, he gets into everything that he knows he's not supposed to be in anyway. Muslim or non-Muslim is just immoral, it's an obscene type of behavior or characteristic or manner mannerisms, but he gets involved in all of that and then it's after a long period of time that finally he comes to the masjid at some point because somebody pushed him and then he says, Imam Sahib, I have questions about this or this or that. Well, what happened to your Salah? I mean, I think it was Ustad bin Umar Khan or somebody else who was bringing up that point. He says, okay, you have doubts about this and this and this and this and this. Tell me, do you, do you pray your salah on time? And the guy says, what are you talking about? I never pray salah. I, I, it's not a concept. Like, it's not even on his mind. Right? So if that barrier, if that connection between us and Allah is lost, then, of course, we will lose so much of the benefits of that connection, and which is Allah which is taking care of us. Among the things that we have to take care of is... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَغُطُّوا مِنْ أَبَصَارِهِمْ وَاحْفَظُوا فُرُوجَهُمْ He says to tell the believing men that they should lower their eyes and that they should safeguard their private parts. ذَلِكَ أَزْكَى لَهُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ صَدِيرٌ بِمَا يَصْنَعُونَ That is best for them and purest for them. And definitely Allah is fully aware of everything that they are doing. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Whoever guarantees for me or safeguards, or tell, promises for me that he will safeguard what is between his two jaws and what is between his two legs, I guarantee for him paradise. If we can take care of and make sure that we don't do something that gets us into trouble from these two avenues, then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, I guarantee for that person paradise. Guarantee. Then that's unfortunate that this is the most common ways that people get themselves into trouble. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَحْفَظُوا أَيْمَانَكُمْ Guard the oaths. Be careful about what we say. Let's guard those oaths and not get excited and just say anything that comes to our mind or make any promise or make any vow or make anything and then, and then we feel like it's very light. But Allah Azzawajal wants us to be very, very careful about what we're saying all the time. To safeguard that and the best thing of course is if we're not sure what we're about to say is it good or not to just keep quiet and think about it for just like they say before you send the email take a step back and sit back put your sit on your hands or something so that you take it and reread that email a few times is that actually going to be good is that going to lead me to the effect that I want somebody suddenly sends an email to his boss and then before he knows it he's hit the return button now what's he going to do he can't bring it back now right so safeguarding that controlling that making sure that we don't do anything that will get us in trouble. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ Remember me and I will remember you. If we guard our mentioning and remembrance and constant dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, then Allah Azza wa Jal is going to take care of us in that manner as well. Imagine that Allah Azza wa Jal Himself is mentioning you. That's amazing. That Allah Azza wa Jal is mentioning you by name, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Azza wa Jal says, إِنْ تَنْصُرُ اللَّهَ يَنْصُرْكُمْ If you help the way of Allah, Allah Azza wa will help you as well. So in the same way, if we guard something that Allah Azza wa likes, or if that, uh, that Allah Azza wa loves, then Allah Azza wa will take care of us as well. Also, last couple of points before we end, is that Allah Azza wa is al-hafidh and al-hafidh. He safeguards, he takes care of, he handles, he manages, he stops the evil, he does all of these things. Why? Because he has full knowledge of everything, Allah Azza wa Jal says, "Ahsahu Allah wa Nasu." Allah Azza wa Jal has kept track of every single final, tiny detail, 
And what about everybody else? They forgot so many things. One asu. And he says, Wa kulla shayin ahsaynahu kitaba. Each and every single thing we have written it down in every last and final detail, and it's written down in a register in a book and been recorded. And he says, Wa inna alaykum la hafidin, kiram and katibin, ya alamuna ma tafar. We have definitely placed Hufath, the angels who are writing down everything. Kiram and katibin, ya alamuna ma tafar. They're definitely knowing about everything that you are doing as well. So, um, with that, inshallah, we'll end if there's any comment or The, the word hafid, mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, linguistically, sometimes we fall into the trap of thinking it is static, it is a passive right. action. Yeah. Uh, but from what you're saying, and it also reminds me of, of something one of the, the visiting Shio said about, about that, that, you know, so many things have to work actively so perfectly for a person just to stay alive right. by morning. Right. <laughs> in yeah. the same way, to have a, to, to, to preserve something and maintain it, it's not a passive act. It's not like we reach, it's just like have the Quran, you, know? <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't reach that stage and you keep static, that's yeah. it. If you don't do anything, it's not going to stay there. Mm -hmm. Hafud is, is an active action and an and, and effort. Absolutely. You know, full of effort kind of, kind of thing, which is, uh, uh, you know, just amazing how, how much effort it takes to, to maintain absolutely. status quo. Yeah, absolutely. And so, uh, because Ism Fa'il is the person who's constantly doing that. So al hafid subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is constantly, actively doing that action repeatedly. And we would hope that Hafid al-Qur'an is the same way that that person has on a regular basis there going back and viewing what it is that they've memorized as well. Otherwise, as you mentioned, it goes goes away so quickly. As the Prophet Sallallahu says, be careful about what you memorize, otherwise it'll run away as fast as a camel that's been unhooked from the, where its rope has come loose. It, it just runs away so fast. Um, imagine, like, you leave the door open, how fast is it that your cat runs out of the house, right? And so, we have to be careful about that kind of thing. And so that's that's exactly that, exactly as you mentioned. You have Hafid al Hafid subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the one who is constantly always maintaining that. And if Allah is not constantly, I mean, if he removes his protection from us from any one angle, I mean, there's millions and millions of diseases that can happen. There's doctors who specialize in just one disease. And if you talk about infectious diseases, you get a whole field. Then you can talk about other diseases. Then you can talk about all the cancers. Then you can talk about all the different uh, uh, autoimmune diseases where the body attacks itself because it thinks that itself is some kind of foreign thing. So the immune system attacks the body and then starts rejecting healthy parts of the body. I mean, in this so shocking of an idea that the body would be attacking itself and that in, it's a massive, massive field. They're just, just now beginning to scratch the surface of understanding what all those diseases are as well. So if any one of these things, if Allah still removes the protection from us in any single, single way, then how quickly is it that, that, uh, that the body is overtaken? They say actually one of the ways that Allah still stops cancer is that the human cell has its own limited lifespan. And then there's other cells as part of the immune system that say that if this cell hasn't died by a specific amount of time, they attack it to make sure that it dies so that it doesn't become cancerous. So what happens if that immune system doesn't attack this cell now, then it becomes a tumor. Then that tumor becomes malignant. And then very quickly, then it spreads. So there's a system, there's a constant process there. And at any one time, if anything in this link, in this long chain breaks, then that's why at the end of it, the doctors always say, I'm sorry, we've done what we can do now, please just pray. That's all. In every decent sized hospital, you will find a chapel somewhere, you will find some prayer room, you will find something. That's all. So, in the same way, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us, hafidu ala salat, hafidu ala salat, hafidu ala you know, that means it's a continuous effort, you know, non stop. That's right. She had within the nafs, it is. Do these things. It's Absolutely. not something, okay, it's a habit now, I, I can let go of it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. We have to keep constantly working on it because Shaitan's constantly working <coughs> on us, so we have to keep constantly defending. You know, like if you ever watch Lord, Lord of the Rings or something like that, there's, you know, the enemy is all surrounding the castle and these guys, the archers and the swordsmen, each of them has their own task that they have to do. Imagine if they just decide to go to sleep for an hour. 
I mean, how quickly is the thing going to be overrun, right? The, the, the defenses have to be constantly in place because the other side is constantly attacking. Uh, one, one more thing. Yeah. When, on on Surik Asr, you mentioned, yeah. um, I mean, uh, the time of Asr, the Masat al Asr, the Salat al Wustam, uh, one of the uh, uh, just ones I heard that the time, the time of Asr is even like in the old days when people weren't outside. It's so difficult to let go because you only have a few more minutes left in the day time, and you yeah. want to catch up every minute to finish your harvest mm -hmm. or, or do whatever. So it's difficult to let go of the work because you know you have a finite amount of time left. You try to make the best of it, and you have to drop everything and go and then you know, project for yourself. So. That's, that's true, and that's really so beautiful because during the middle of the day, it's too hot many times to do so many things. The afternoon is when it starts cooling down and I think everything's now settled, I can get so much work done, but then even just to take five minutes away. Which is absolutely the case. I mean, we, we rush in our you know office kind of environment too. We rush towards the end of the day, send that email, get that last meeting done, this, this, that, that. And so the time is very fast. Well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, can you remind us again um, what is what does it mean to be like under the hopes of Salah? to hafz of salah. So Allah Azza when he talked about hafz wa ala salawati wa salat al so it's everything that's related to the salah. The timing of the salah, making sure that we have the proper wudu for the salah, making sure that we are fully having the khushur, the concentration and the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that, as opposed to just being a very quick exercise. So all of those things go into the salah from the spiritual preparation and the um, you know physical preparation for that as well. So to take care of all of those things, because just like if we're taking care of or maintaining Anything complicated or anything valuable, there's so many things that you have to do to handle that. So you take care of a machine or take care of a car or anything, there's like a hundred different things that you have to do. Any one of those things, if not taken care of, could eventually, the whole car might break down. So it's the same thing about the Salah Hasta, making sure that we have the right intention, making sure that we are in a place, even among the things that the, the scholars advise is, they said to make sure that you have a place you pray Salah where it's like the colors and whatever aren't distracting you. There's not the noise that's distracting. So the Prophet himself, once Aisha anha, she had placed some curtains, which were not, fa we would not call them fancy curtains at all. It was literally just like a, a couple of stripes on the, uh, on the curtain or something like that. So the Prophet wasalam, was praying the Salah and he was looking at this and he's, after the Salah he said that, Aisha, can you remove these, they distracted me because it, it's just a simple pattern on the curtain, but that was enough for the Prophet wasalam, to, that he was looking at that, uh, I mean, meaning that he felt that this was not his best Salah. So, um, uh, so even those kind of things that perhaps we should have a corner set aside where there's no TV or bright pictures or you know anything, uh, lots of noise or anything like that. And, and ideally the kids should know that as well, that this place, if it's a room that's excellent, if not, it's a corner of the living room or something like that, but this is the place where Salah is done and it's not for any other. I'm sorry. Maintaining the Jama'at. Absolutely, maintaining the Jama'at is part of that too, absolutely. Because in the Jama'ah, and it's so amazing, we find ourselves, we always have a much better quality of Salah in the Jama'ah than we do by ourselves. Yes. Guaranteed. Mm -hmm. All the time. And so that's a huge, huge part. Absolutely. Yes. The of the Salah includes not only the outside which mm -hmm. and stuff, but also the inside. The, the spiritual part is very important. Part. Absolutely. The Khushu of the Salah. Absolutely. Yeah. And the Khushu comes about through that preparation, through... I mean, un the ideal system would be that a person makes wudu in the house and they walk towards the masjid every time and every step that they take, their sins are being dropped away and they enter the masjid and they're making adhkar the whole way and then they sit in the masjid and wait uh, for the adhan or wait for the iqamah and then they, they pray some the salah and everything. So this whole time that they're doing this, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said um, uh, that he is fi salati ma dama ma dama rajul In other words, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam indicated that this person is counted as being in salah so long as he's waiting for the salah to um, uh, and 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 the angels keep remembering, the angels keep reminding, and they keep talking about him and making dua for him and making making istighfar for that person, so long as that person is waiting for the salah. And the time of the salah. So there are so many benefits for that as well. Not only the spiritual benefits that we get, and the fact that we are doing the obligation that we have to. Again, this is the ideal system, and that's why really the best thing is if we can to pray salah in the masjid that much more often. Than myself this before I remind anybody else. Um, but in addition to that, if we can gather a few of the brothers at work, if you know, you know some brothers or sisters, wherever you are, and try to establish an amount. If you can at work, sometimes it's possible, sometimes it's not possible. But 
that's the time. Hopefully, you should be working in that direction. I just want to say I'm, I'm, I'm like a living testimony to all of that. You know what I'm saying? When one guard comes down, then a whole slew of all different types of things start to attack you. So yeah. uh, it's like when I was at Stray, I always had a dread of Islam still in me. Because I, I remember when I first became Muslim, and I would be make Salah and Jamaah as much as I can, just like I do now, right? And sometimes we uh, say, man, when Ramadan comes, it's all filled, but now it's only five of us. And you make that statement, then you turn around and turn into one of those people, you know? So I've witnessed everything. So it's like, uh, I'm just glad that when I come back to Salah, everything comes back and uh, all of it is true and I know all of it. And, and now I have that situation where I work with a, some Muslim, but he don't want to pray with me. Yeah. That brings forth some of those energies he was speaking about mm -hmm. earlier when you have something in your mind that just dominates your mind, dominates your mind. Like, man, it's time for Salah, and you won't make Salah with me, but you want to talk about Allah all day. Yeah. Sometimes that holds my mind too much, and I feel some kind of way. I just have to keep and stuff there, you know, yep. and, and make do off of the Absolutely. brother, but it's, it's sometimes it's hard as a weight on me because it's like I want more for you, you than you want for yourself. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes I really get to you know, so. And everybody's going through the challenge. I mean, we've all been through ups and downs in our life spiritually. Yeah. So, you know, he's going through his challenges and we're all going through our challenges too. So yeah, that's another thing I have to remember because I have to remember that I was just like that and worse just yesterday some so to say you know what I'm saying so I have to keep the patience it's just a it's just the immediate test of getting your man back built up yeah. even though you was just of the dunya just yeah. recently you know, so. and like I say we we've all been there unfortunately I mean there's it's it's very common unfortunately to find people who will spend all night long talking about politics in Muslim world or whatever different parts of the Muslim world or so on but in the he just can't get himself to be disciplined enough to stand up to pray in this long time. Uh, but he has the energy to talk about the leaders and the presidents mm -hmm. and the kings and prime ministers all, all day and all night. So, uh, but it's, it's unfortunate, but it's very widespread. So. You started saying <coughs> Hafiz, uh, Hafiz, he's uh, two synonyms. One is to literally remember mm -hmm. and the protector also. Yeah. But then there is a a little bit difference in this, right. uh, that when it comes to Salah with the mm -hmm. relatives and all that, yes, you're highly encouraged to do that. Mm -hmm. But you know very well that <coughs> the personalities very rarely change. Yeah. Uh, especially it happens in friends and relatives and politics and all that. Does it, like for example, Yusuf mm -hmm. uh, and he was, of course, the prophet. When he forgave, did he totally forget did you totally forget about what kind of people his brothers were or are still? Yeah. Or lesser example, in our cases, uh, we forgive, but should we forget? There is a there is a difference. A lot of times what happens yeah. emotionally is that if we forget, yeah. we tend to commit the same mistake again. Yes. And that's it. We, we fall into the same trap again. Yes. And then we fight again. Right. And then we and, and what you bring up is an excellent point, which I think really illustrates this point very well, which is that Yusuf Islam made sure that although he forgave them, he didn't allow himself to be put in a position where they could abuse him again. Again. And similarly, when the Prophet ﷺ forgave all of Quraysh, he also did not allow himself to be put in that position where they could do anything to him. So, and as the Prophet ﷺ says, the believer is not bitten from the same hope twice. Exactly. The believer is not bitten or is not affected, is not harmed, from the same place twice. And there's a very, you know, a very interesting or close Americanism around this as well, where they say, if you fool me once, shame on you. If you fool me twice, shame on me. Because I allowed you to do that to me the second time. So it's actually my fault. How could I be so foolish to let you do that to me again the second time? And so that's it. It's a very powerful sentiment. Yusuf Alayhisalam made sure, I, I don't want, it's not his doing, it was Allah who gave him that blessing. But it was only after that point that he says, La tathriba alaykum. He's making the offer them really sincerely. He hopes that Allah will yeah. forgive them, for sure. But at the same time, he's not going to allow himself to be put in that situation. Okay. And the Prophet also, he didn't even, he, I mean, among so many other reasons, 
But the Prophet ﷺ did not decide to settle down in Mecca once he's conquered Mecca. He decided to go back to Medina, where the people who have actually sacrificed and actually spent and actually sweated and had shed blood for the sake of the Prophet ﷺ, for the sake of Allah and his messenger ﷺ, that's all in Medina, not in Mecca. His relatives are in Mecca, but his followers, really, those who fought alongside him, they're in Medina. So he goes back to Medina. <coughs> there is a difference, wide difference between forgiving, mm. but still retaining the reservations. That to not be there for twice. Do not, do not forget about That's what right. has happened. That's right. Don't yeah. hold it to hurt That's you right. or them, yeah. but forgive it. Just but don't allow yourself to be burned. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's a very good point.